My name is Kevin Mitchell. I'm 30 years of age and I'm from a place called Dagenham. Growing up, you know, it's what it was. Boys and kids from Dagenham, we grew up rough and tough, you know. Um, from like schools of hard knocks, you know, tough kids. Which led me to boxing, so that ain't too bad. Might have had, I suppose, this day and age now I'm 30. So as a kid, it was different sort of things. It was me. Me, me, me boy with dreams and, and I believe that it all happened early and all quick. But as I've got older, it's become, the motivation for me now is my children. You know, to secure their background and the, their future and what they want to do in the, when they're in their 30s, their lifestyle. I want to make sure they're secure and they're safe. Boxing has changed my life in a lot of ways. You know, at the start, it, yeah, I felt as a pro I had a lot of stress with a career. I did with like basically the crowds and things after I used to go out a lot on the booze. But as a, as a man now, I'm sure you um, it's changed my life for the good. You know, I've slowed down, got my life to be secure and be normal, and it's made me helped me to meet some lovely people along the way that's um, helped me enjoy my life as outside the boxing as well. <laughs> Daniel Shotter, yeah. Well, basically. We worked on the plank game plan in the gym and was working on south by left hand. That's basically it's an unorthodox punch for me, something I don't normally do. So we worked on it in the fight in, in the gym and worked on it. And we started working on it in the fight. And then in the end I could feel him slowly, slowly breaking away and getting ready to take out. But I didn't want to do it too early because I didn't want to basically walk onto no shots and make no mistakes. So on the final moment I was on the ropes, tucking up, taking shots off of him. I meant to see how his reaction was. I clicked him with a little left uppercut. I see him fade and then they stopped it, which was a good decision. I knew he was in a bad way. When I was 14, a man, said to me, a man called Frankie Sims said to me, you're good at attacking, you've got to learn to box. So basically I learned two styles, about box and fight, and I, I worked with both. So I worked on both. So basically my style is adapt when I'm in there, adapt before I'm camping when you're training and get ready for your opponent. Got me the relationship between my trainer. I suppose all fighters, Danny, like, he's like, he's like a father figure in some sort of way. He's a coach, he's a mentor, he's just an out-and-out -out all great man. You know, he's um, helped me along my career perfect in the last two years. And I watch him work with other fighters, Danny, young fighters, and I don't know how lucky they are they've got a man like him so early on in their career. So, yeah. As I said, when I was a young man, I found it very hard. I used to deal with it with booze and going out partying and thinking it's... It, I deal with it stressed by going out and partying and getting out of my face. But as a man, basically, I speak, I speak, I speak about things that I'm going through and I just talk about it. I don't let it pressure me. I basically relax about it and I just let things go over my head and I just deal with the training. I suppose I deal with it in here now, in the gym. I take, take my energy out in the gym, stress it out in the gym. The final moment that happened in my life, I suppose, when I met... I suppose it was probably an age when I was... Two years ago, I was beating ready to either make a comeback or basically I was, I was very close to totally retiring and giving up the boxing game. I was driving down the country lanes going towards Metrum and I hadn't actually signed a deal with him yet. And I felt like I needed to ring my old trainer back, which was Tony Sims, which is my trainer now. But I didn't know what to do and how to go about it. So I rang my, ex I rang my girlfriend up and explained to her how I feel and what I should, what I should do. And she said, just do it, ring him if that's what you feel like you should do. So I rang my trainer Tony up and um, he said, come down, I'll see you in the gym, and start going to work. And that was a defining moment in my life, basically, to change my life around totally. You know, before the fight, I had a lot, lot, I had a lot riding on it. You know, I had a um, lot, lot of fighters in the gym. Obviously, I'm one of the older ones there, so a lot of the younger ones look up to you and think, and they want to see how you react with things and that. I had a lot of pressure on me. I knew that win this fight, it sort of secures my future for my kids. Lose it, I didn't go and get a nine to five. But, um, you know, I've worked hard and been in the gym with the lads and with the, tra the new trainer, Tony, and what he does with me. He makes me feel so secure and so, so confident. I knew I'd get the job done. Was, what, what, I was in the dressing room with Johnny Ryder before the fight and we are sitting there and we kept it as relaxed as possible. But um, that night on, that, on the, sitting in the dressing room, I remember just thinking, get the job done and then we, we can crack on for the world title. My preparations, basically I couldn't be giving my game plans away, but it's been very hard, it's going to be brutal. We fly to Texas for a month. We'll be doing a lot of training over there, a lot of good cardiovascular strength training, making sure we're on top of our weight, make sure we're not making the weight too late, we're making it early so our weight's strong. 
I suppose we've been a lot of sparring out there with Mexicans and things, so yeah, it's good. We'll be ready.